Hello and welcome to another episode of Locked On Wolves. Today on the show, it's the post-game podcast from the Timberwolves blowout 21-point wire-to-wire win over the Orlando Magic on Tuesday night. We'll break down what the Wolves did really well in this game on both ends of the floor. Uh, really, uh, almost a perfect Timberwolves performance. Good to see it after a bit of a rough stretch here lately. We'll break the whole thing down. We'll do individual studs and duds. It's all upcoming. Welcome in. You are Locked On Wolves. You are Locked On Timberwolves. Your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Wolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Locked On Wolves. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy hump day. And it is a victory Wednesday. It's also a game day. Uh, the Wolves play again tonight, just the third back-to-back on the schedule this year. But this is the post-game podcast from Tuesday's win over the Orlando Magic. We'll break down the whole game here today on the show. A big thank you right off the top for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, the show is free and available everywhere, including YouTube, as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. Wherever you like to listen to podcasts, you can find Lockdown Wolves. You can also watch on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And you can follow an X at Locked on T-Wolves, and also my account, which is at B-Beacon. That's with two Bs, two Es, C-K-E-N. All right, so Minnesota comes into this game. You know, we we talked about, like, Tuesday's show, if you missed it. I previewed the Magic game, but I spent a lot of the show talking about some of these misconceptions about the Wolves and also just how difficult the schedule's been lately. The Wolves had lost three out of four coming into this game. They are five and five in their last ten. But of course, their last 14 opponents coming into Orlando were against playoff teams, above 500 teams. And over that stretch, the Wolves are eight and six. Despite all the noise and all the struggles here within the last few days, the Wolves still have, over that period of time, the third best defense in the league, just over those 14 games against top flight competition. Coming into this game, still the number one defense in the entire league. And they took on an Orlando team that, frankly, should have posed a, a, a difficult matchup. And it really did it. And it was the Wolves defense that that owned the night in this one. I should also point out, we talked about this on the preview show too. Like we should acknowledge all the guys that were missing for Orlando. Uh, they had a, a, a bunch of guys out. Obviously, the headliner here is Franz Wagner, who's uh, recently sprained his ankle and, and was out. Jonathan Isaac was ruled out pretty early. Joe Ingles hasn't played in quite a while, almost a month. Um, Wendell Carter Jr., some some important size for them. Um so like it, 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 yes, was a depleted Orlando team. There's no question about that. However, um, I, you know, I would argue two of their best three players played in Paulo or two of their best, two of their three most important players outside of Wagner, uh, Paulo Bancaro and Jalen Suggs. And, um, you know, those guys both played and neither of them played particularly well in this game, mostly because the Wolves had a really good plan and they executed extremely well. So, you know, setting that aside, this was still an important and a very dominant win. Like if this had been a, a a touch and go thing that came down to the wire, I'd maybe be a little bit more critical based on who was missing. But this game was literally never in doubt. I mean, from the jump, the Wolves got up eight nothing very early, like right away in this game. Orlando didn't score for the first, I think, three plus minutes of this game at all, and um, it was just it was just complete dominance from the beginning. The, what the Magic were trying to do defensively with some of their challenges size wise was going to be going to be a challenge. It was, it was going to be a challenge for them to, to, to try and slow down Minnesota. They're starting uh Goga Batazzi and, and, you know, fine. He wasn't going to be, and, and he has been starting for them basically all season, but he's basically the only size that they had in the rotation with no Isaac, no Wendell Carter. And, um, you know, just, uh, and no Wagner as well. And so uh, they had Mo Wagner, but he's not, quite the player that his brother is and um, Minnesota punished anytime Orlando tried to switch in this game. They switched a lot of pick and rolls. They tried to play the zone for a while and still were still switching within the zone um, to try and check Minnesota. But both Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert did an extremely solid job scoring, punishing these, these matchups. Um, 
And that's no small thing. Like it, it maybe should be automatic, but it's never quite that simple, especially when occasionally you've got a legitimately plus defender like a Jalen Suggs guarding you. It's never as easy as you'd think it would be for a seven footer to, to, you know, beat up on a guy that's six, four stuck in the post, especially when it's Rudy who struggles with, you know, isn't the world's most efficient, uh, most adept post scorer, uh, even though points per possession wise, he's been actually pretty good throughout his career, but like, you're not going to run a play to throw him the ball in the block. Like that's, he's not Nikola Pekovic, right? And uh, with Carl Anthony Towns, you know, we all know he too often gets a little, I don't know, a little excited when he gets a mismatch and he gets his arms swinging and he's hooking guys and he's running guys over. And I don't believe he was called for offensive foul in this game. And Rudy was efficient with his looks. Both of these guys were really impressive. And for Rudy, it was more a lot of rim runs in transition. Um, if he knew he had a small on him, he just went to the front of the rim. Like, I'll catch it here. Why well, catch it at, you know, eight feet outside the paint on, on the side of the floor? I'll just go straight to the middle of the paint. They'll give me the ball right away. I'll get a lob, whatever. Uh, there were a couple of those where they weren't even like straight, you know, lobs off of a roll off of a dive to the rim. But he was just kind of hanging out like six feet in front of the rim right outside the restricted area. There was one that Kyle Anderson threw him. There was another one. I think it was Cat, uh, maybe Jaden. And, you know, a uh, Wolves player would have the ball on the baseline and be like, oh, Rudy's got position. I'm just going to lob it to him. Almost a flat footed alley oop. Rudy, I think, had two and ones on possess possessions like that as well. So this wasn't just simply, oh, there's a, there's a small on me. Let me post up from, you know, from the low block. This was, let me just rim run. Let me just go directly in front of the rim and yell for the ball. And, and he also did a good job sealing. There was one particular play where, the Magic were in a zone and they switched and I forget it might have actually been Suggs or no, it was Cole Anthony who's, you know, uh, or no, it was Markel Fultz, sorry, who's a little bigger than Anthony, but still a guard, right? A point guard. And Rudy got him on his back. He just sealed him, you know, opened up baseline, got the ball and got a dunk like those plays. It seems like it should be so easy, but the Wolves oftentimes I shouldn't say oftentimes the Wolves are the best team in the Western Conference, but but they too often it seems like mess those things up with, you know, they try to be too fancy on the pass, try to be too cute. Cat gets the offensive foul. You know, Rudy does Rudy stuff where sometimes he tries to do too much. This was a very simplistic, for the most part, offensive plan for Minnesota. It was like, hey, if they're going to try and guard us with a small, let's just punish them. And that's exactly what happened. You had Carl Anthony Towns, you had, Ant, uh, excuse me, Rudy Gobert combining for 49 points on just 29 shots in this game. Rudy was eight of 10. Cat was 11 of 19. He was five of five outside the arc. And Cat only attempted one free throw in this game. Rudy was five of six at the line, though. So this was across the board an extremely efficient performance for the Wolves' star bigs um, and killed the Orlando game plan. Like we've seen teams try and guard Cat with smaller players and goad Cat into offensive fouls. That did not happen in this game. Carl Anthony Towns played within himself. Rudy Gobert had the spacing down perfectly. The Wolves' guards, the Wolves' wings. We're looking for these mismatches and the Wolves ultimately exploited them. In the second quarter, the Wolves did, you know, there were some silly fouls. Ant picked up his third foul early in the second quarter. Um, some silly turnovers. The Wolves actually turned it over 18 times in this game. We'll get back to that later. That was uh, maybe the one blemish in this game that, that actually allowed Orlando to stick around and then led to another issue, which was the Wolves had all their starters or most of their starters in the game until about the two minute mark in the fourth quarter in a game that they basically led for 20 plus for like, three quarters of this game. Uh, but that's because they were too sloppy with the ball and Chris Finch didn't feel comfortable pulling guys any earlier. Um, but for the most part, like this thing stabilized, they were up 30 at halftime, like with ants on the bench with the foul trouble in the second quarter. Um, that was when Rudy and cat really went to town and really dominated. I want to talk about the defense uh, as well here. We'll do that next. And then we'll do individual studs and duds. And that's how we'll close out the show here today. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our title sponsors over at FanDuel. The NFL regular season wrapped up this weekend. The playoffs kick off this weekend. Two games on Saturday, three games on Sunday, and a Monday night wildcard round game for the NFL. So six great games. It's the second best weekend of NFL football season. Next weekend, the divisional round is even better because you get four high-quality games across Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but anyway, this is going to be a, an awesome weekend. There's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel. America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when they place a $5 bet. That's right. 
It's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose, by playing it, placing a $5 bet. The app is extremely easy to use. There are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. It's the best way to find popular parlays and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash NBA and make your first bet a layup. Excuse me, FanDuel.com slash on. You don't need the NBA. FanDuel.com slash on to make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, uh, let's talk defense. Minnesota defensively in this game was stifling. They absolutely smothered the Orlando Magic in this game. Orlando had 16 first quarter points. I mentioned this earlier. They didn't score until the, I want to say it was like basically the nine minute mark. I've got it right here. Uh, Orlando did not score until the 850 mark in the game. Caleb Houston hit a three pointer. The Wolves were already up 11 nothing. I said earlier it was 8 nothing. It was actually 11 nothing before Orlando scored. With 850 left in the first quarter, they scored 16 in the first quarter, 37 in the first half. In the third quarter, we're actually pacing to to be around that 20-point mark again until a bunch of turnovers late in the third quarter for Minnesota that allowed Orlando to go from a 34-point deficit to going to the fourth quarter. This was actually a 24-point deficit. So Orlando, it was like a 9-0 run and ultimately like a 12-2 run or something at the end of the third quarter that made it a 24-point game. Otherwise, this thing was like had absolute, it was it was a laugher, but it had like absolute blowout laugher written all over it. Uh, but it got uh, third quarter got just a little bit uneven for Minnesota in terms of turnovers. But all that to say, the defense was very impressive. And I was worried about this matchup. I talked about it at the end of the show on Tuesday. Uh, Orlando's a good rebounding team. They get to the line a bunch. They're actually first in the league in a free throw rate as an offense. Paolo Bancaro averages seven and a half free throw attempts a game. And Orlando's a good defensive team. And obviously, you know, it hurts to not have, you know, Wendell Carter add something, obviously, on the glass, especially and defensively. Um you know, Wagner, same deal. Like you're missing guys that are going to contribute. I get that, but it's still a well-coached team. Um, and frankly, I should say this before I forget to say it, this is a little bit of a tangent, but I was really impressed with how hard Orlando played when they got down 34 and Jamal Mosley is an active coach on that sideline. And that team played hard for him. Um, and this was actually more a function. I know I mentioned the wolves turnovers and, and it was, you know, 18 turnovers is way too many win or lose. Um, but Orlando hanging around and, and, by hanging around, I mean around 20 points instead of 30, 35 points is a testament to how hard they played despite being down by 30 more than anything else. Like it was more Orlando playing hard and 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 still trying to force the issue, try to get the crowd into the game, like Mosley coaching hard on the sideline. Like I was impressed with how Orlando played for the last quarter and a half of this game. Obviously, it's a big issue for them to get down by as much as they did, but shorthanded, whatever, fine. It happened. The fight that they showed was very impressive to me. Um, so I wanted to make sure I said that. But anyway, Orlando, I was worried about the matchup. And 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 also Paolo Bancaro, like fours that can put the ball on the floor, give the Wolves trouble. And, you know, combined with how often he gets to the line, which is also an issue well improving overall. Lately, it's been more of an issue. The Wolves putting opponents on the line and then having something to say about it to the officials. Bancaro played 35 minutes in this game. So it's not like he got pulled early because it was a blowout. He played 35 minutes. And he scored just 18 points on 22 shots. And he only attempted four free throws in this game on 22 shot attempts in 35 minutes. He also turned it over four times and only had three assists. So the first thing to focus on is the 18 points took him 22 shots to get. The second thing is only four free throw attempts. This is a guy that that's almost half what he averages for the season. Seven and a half, usually seven and a half free throw attempts per game. And Minnesota lately has been putting teams on the line more often. And, and we obviously have seen McDaniels and Carl Tiddy towns, two guys who I assumed would guard him at some point in this game. They have troubles. They have trouble not, you know, getting into foul trouble themselves. I was impressed with how the wolves handled this and how they guarded Bancaro. They showed him length. They, uh, at times, like if you watch how McDaniels guarded him, he gave him space and was almost daring him to shoot both threes and mid-range jumpers. And Bancaro has improved his three-point shot a lot. He's actually a little bit over league average this year. Coming to the game, he was, yeah, he was 
Uh, but he was still giving him a little bit of space and almost daring him, especially when he was inside the arc. Like, hey, make your move. I'm going to let you shoot this and then still get a good contest because I'm Jaden McDaniels and I have extremely long arms and I can still get a good contest here. Uh, but he didn't see very many easy attempts all night. He didn't make a three until like late third, early fourth quarter when the Magic were trying to get back from that 34 points, you know, closer to 20 points. It was when he hit his first three of the game. He was a minus 30 in this game because they left him out there for 35 minutes. Three assists, four turnovers, only four free throw attempts, 18 points on 22 shots. It's a testament to the Wolves game plan, a testament to Jaden McDaniels, who did a, a majority of the guarding, and also the way the Wolves clogged the paint in this game defensively. Orlando only scored 38 points in the paint. Minnesota was a plus 22 in points in the paint. They had 60. Orlando had 38 points in the paint. And yes, I know who was out. I know Wagner was out. I know Carter was out. I get it. Um, but like, I don't know. I mean, Paolo Bancaro tries to score in the paint quite a bit. And he didn't do any damage there. Nobody else did. Mo Wagner did a little bit off the bench. But again, a lot of that was late. Um, he actually attempted 11 of Orlando's 18 free throws in this game. Uh, this was just an impressive all around performance defensively for Minnesota. And well, they actually only blocked four shots in this game. Orlando blocked five. Minnesota only blocked four. Um, it was more about the rim deterrence. And there were a couple of possessions like early third quarter when they stretched this lead from 30 to 34 and were threatening to stretch it more. Rudy had a had a block in there. Jaden had a couple of near blocks, but there were also those moments that, and you see this when Rudy's going good and the Wolves' defense is going good, where guys will probe into the paint and they kind of turn their back to the rim, and then they kind of peek over their shoulder, and Rudy's still there, or he's he's come over to help or whatever, and they're like, nope, and they just dribble right back out. It's hilarious, and it happens all the time. It happened a bunch in this game, and it's more about the deterrence. And we've talked about that before, pulling the rim deterrence numbers, the the lack of simply the lack of field goal attempts at the rim against Minnesota's defense, because teams are petrified of getting swatted by the Wolves size at the rim, whether it's Jaden McDaniels or Rudy Gobert, and even Carl Anthony Towns and Nas Reed have been, have been uh, above passable, better than passable this year in terms of their rim deterrence. The mere threat of Rudy Gobert sending someone's shot into the stands or into the backcourt is enough to keep guys out of the paint more often than not. And also the field goal percentage at the rim, same deal, right? Like he may not be getting that many blocks. In fact, in this game, I guess Rudy did have three blocks. The Wolves as a team only had four. But first of all, guys don't want to shoot it. And then their second thing is they don't want to get a block. So they alter their shot and they miss it. And and happened a bunch in this game again. And guys are missing bunnies. Guys are missing open floaters because Rudy kind of feigns like he's going to actually contest. But he, he, he kind of stunts at them and then he recovers to try and get the rebound. It's just it's just a master class in watching a, somebody protect the paint and think back to two years ago and how poor the Wolves paint defense was or def, well, the defense overall was OK two years ago. But the interior defense, right, if teams got past that that first line of defense in the Wolves aggressive defensive scheme two years ago, you're one under Finch when they lost to Memphis in the first round and Jaron Jackson Jr. and Memphis offensive rebounded the Wolves to death. It's night and day. It's completely impressive now what the Wolves were doing uh, in terms of defending the paint. All right, let's close the show by talking individual studs and duds. We'll look at some box score stats from this one as well. But uh, the major takeaways are efficient offense. Uh, we'll talk a little, I guess this will be part of studs and duds. We'll talk about Cat's game because he needs some some flowers here after this one. Uh, but the defense was super impressive. The offensive, um, the the bigs on offense for Minnesota, Rudy and Cat. I talked a little bit about that already, I guess. But I want to talk a little more about Cat's shot selection beyond just punishing smalls, which he which they did on you know punishing size, uh, um, which they did in this game. But there's a couple other things I want to get to, and we'll do individual studs and duds, and that's how we'll close the show out here today. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our friends at BetterHelp. The show is sponsored by BetterHelp. We're here, we're past New Year's, and uh, I, like many other people, can get obsessed with how to change myself instead of just expanding on what I might already be doing right. Like sometimes we don't give ourselves enough credit for things we are doing right. We get caught up in what we're not doing well, or maybe we we try to make a goal that's too lofty, or we try to bite, too, bite, bite off more than we can chew at once. Um, or maybe it's just you're trying to be better organized this new year, and you've already organized one part of your space, and you want to tackle another. You're trying to eat healthy. Uh, whatever it might be, 
Therapy can help you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions that you might have made and make changes that really stick. If you're considering starting therapy, consider giving BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress that you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockdownNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockdownNBA. All right, let's get to individual studs and duds, and we'll hit on a couple more things here as we as we go through that. Um, talked about Rudy. I'm going to mention him first because I thought this was a great Rudy game. Um, I, you know, there's not a whole lot else to say about him. 21 and 12 is obviously a great line. Eight of 10 for him from the field, and one of his misses was a um, I don't know, 16 footer. It was a weird. Uh, I don't know that I'd call it a jump shot, a flat-footed push shot with a little bit of a jump. He made one of those from about, what, 10 feet a few weeks ago. This one was from further out, and Chris Finch did not appear to appreciate it, but that was one of his two misses. He was 8 of 10 on the night overall from the field, 5 of 6 at the line, 12 boards, 1 assist, 1 steal, 3 blocks, only 2 turnovers for Rudy Gobert, and we already talked about both aspects of his game. Sealing, um, sealing switches, dominating, punishing switches, rim running, and then defensively shutting down the paint for the Wolves. Uh, let's talk about Carl Anthony Towns. I'm actually going to go four studs. Four studs for this game. Carl Anthony Towns was awesome. 28 points, six rebounds, five assists, three steals. 11 of 19 from the field, five of five outside the arc. So, And he only got to the line once. So he attempted 14 two-point shots in this game and only had one free throw attempt. Side note, I actually really thought, I thought the officiating was great in this game. It was hardly noticeable which is awesome. Neither team got to 20 free throw attempts. Um, it was just like not too many whistles, which was so, so refreshing. That said, I was a little surpri surprised to look up at the end of the game and see that Cat had one free throw on 14 two-point attempts. And he didn't shoot that many mid-range jumpers in this game. I can think of two. Um, I'll pull up a shot chart really quick here. I, I think he shot two mid-range jumpers, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and Watch, I'm going to look it up, and it's going to be more than that. But I feel like it was... Ah, uh, yeah, I'm right. Only one non-paint two, actually. Carl Thay Towns attempted in this game. So that means he shot... What did I say? He shot 11 twos. So he shot 10... He had 10 shot attempts in the paint and only drew one foul, which is a bit mind-boggling. In real time, there's only one I can think of where I was like, ah, that should have been a foul call. I actually think the officiating was good, and I think Cat was really good. I don't really have a complaint there. Um, He was aggressive, appropriately aggressive. He obviously picked his shots well, being 5 of 5 outside the arc, which was good to see, by the way, after he missed a couple of those threes late in the game um, uh, in the Dallas game on um, on Sunday. That was you know, a winnable game. But good to see him be perfect from outside the arc in this game. Didn't have to do a ton of work on the glass. We'll talk about Jaden McDaniels because Jaden McDaniels showed up on the glass of all people, and Rudy Gobert did work on the glass with, with 12 rebounds in this game. Um, so... I like a really, really well-rounded cat game. And to see him pick his spots so well was great to see. And he was doing that earlier this season before he had the injury and missed, um, you know, missed what? A, I think he only missed one or maybe two games with the with the knee. Um, it was good to see him get back to that because we hadn't seen that in a while. Um, and, and he was very, very, very good on, on offense in this game. And actually was pretty good defensively as well, I thought. Jaden McDaniels, 15 points, nine rebounds, six of 10 shooting in this game. He was two of five outside the arc, made his only free throw on an and one opportunity. So 15 and nine was a game high plus 35, a plus 35. The Wolves won by 21 points of this game was super dominant on Ben Carroll. By the way, Ben Carroll was a minus 30, right? Nobody else on the magic was worse than a minus 18. No one else in the Wolves was better than a plus 28. So they're well clear of everybody else. Their minutes were pretty clearly matched up in this game. They each played 35. McDaniels was a plus 35. Ben Carroll was a minus 30. And uh, McDaniels was awesome. Really, really good defensively. Similar to Towns. Picked his spots offensively in a game where Anthony Edwards was just not a major part of what ended up happening. 
McDaniels was tied for second on the team in shot attempts behind Cat and tied with Rudy Gobert. Also, rebounding. Nine rebounds. I have been on McDaniels' case, probably not even enough related to rebounding. He had not gotten more than three rebounds in a game since before Christmas. We're talking uh, over seven games. He'd only gotten zero, one, or three rebounds in a game. In fact, Jaden McDaniels hadn't gotten more than five rebounds in a game since November 1st. Now, I'm not expecting him to average more than five rebounds a game because, I don't know, he's guarding point of attack. He's on the perimeter a bunch. He plays the three, like, fine. Average three, four rebounds a game. This dude hadn't gotten more than five rebounds in a game since November 1st when the Wolves beat Denver. He had nine rebounds in that game. And then he he ends up in this game with nine rebounds. So it ties his season high at nine boards. And he added an assist and one steal in this game as well. So a very strong Jaden McDaniels game on both ends of the floor. Also got a shout out with a stud for Nas Reed, 13 and 10 off the bench. Uh, I mean, the Wolves bigs in this game just punished Orlando, which is what they couldn't quite do with consistency against Dallas. Foul trouble was a major problem, but an undersized Dallas team, the Wolves bigs could not do what they did in this game. The three of them, if you combine, I, I should admit, I should give Nas more attention here. 13 and 10, five of eight shooting, two of four on threes. He had a big deep three at one point where the Wolves were not reeling, but they were never reeling in this game where it was a bit dicey. He had a tough three and, uh, you know, that was good. Uh, three turnovers in 21 minutes would be the only issue, but 13 and 10 with two assists. Nas and Cat combined in this game were uh, 62 points. 62 points on what 38 shots 37 shot attempts in this game combined seven of nine from outside the arc and a combined seven of nine from the free throw line as well weird seven of nine is that right yeah seven of nine outside the arc and seven of nine at the free throw line for Nas, cat and rudy combined it, it, like just complete dominance over bancaro uh, Chumo Kiki, uh, Batadze, uh, uh, Mo Wagner, right? The Wolves bigs did what they needed to do to win this game. They protected the paint. They were efficient. They scored over mismatches. They knocked down threes in, in the case of Kat and Oz. Really impressive stuff. Um, I don't really have any duds. I mean, this was a good game. Ant didn't play well, mostly because of, well, actually, I guess I'll give one to Ant. I, he can't get a free pass. He's just because he's Ant. I give Kat duds all the time. Anthony Edwards was a dud in this game. Six points at two of seven shooting. Miss his only two three-point attempts. And actually, even when he did score a little bit, it was it was like a weird stretch where all of a sudden he was taking on three Magic players every time down the floor. It was actually, now that I'm thinking about this, he played so little or did so little, affected the game so little late. This was like first, second quarter before he was in foul trouble. And all of a sudden, he was just like, it was almost like he was heat checking every time down the court for no reason at all. And he made, you know, maybe one tough shot in there. Um, I, like it's a very weird game for Ant. He also had five turnovers, three assists in 26 minutes. He was out there on the floor late in the fourth quarter, probably just because he hadn't played that many minutes and Finch was being stingy with his putting his bench guys in. Uh, but Ant had six points on, on seven shots, five turnovers in, uh, in 26 minutes, not Anthony Edwards finest hour to be sure. Um, also give one to Nikhil Alexander Walker. And and I thought Nikhil was actually good defensively. He was a plus 11 in this game in 18 minutes. He did go uh, 0 for 5 from the field and missed all four of his three point attempts. Uh, so just not a good shooting night. He didn't, wasn't like actively bad in this game. He just didn't shoot the ball well. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually given two duds. So there you go. Um, stat wise in this game, I covered a lot of it already. I'll throw them up there on YouTube if you're watching there. Uh, Minnesota was nearly 54% from the field. Orlando, only 36.2%. So Minnesota holds the Magic to 92 points on just a hair over 36% from the field. 13 of 42 outside the arc. The Wolves made only one less three than Orlando on 12 less attempts. Minnesota was uh, bad in the turnover category. We talked about that a little bit already. And uh, they did win the rebound battle by two boards. And also the free throw battle. Orlando didn't shoot well from the line either, which just made their... Um, their offensive issues in this game even more, um, or I guess, you know, only compounded the issues that they were having offensively. In general, just a really impressive wire-to-wire all-around win for Minnesota. Obviously, the defense was awesome. Uh, packing the paint, deterrence at the rim, 
Uh, perimeter defense did enough on Bancaro. There was that, I didn't even mention this earlier, but there was that stretch late in the third quarter where he went like dunk, three pointer dunk, and the Wolves provided no resistance. Beyond that little mini stretch, their defense on him was really, really good in this game. And then offensively, the bigs did what they needed to do. They dominated mismatches. Uh, you know, outside of Ant's performance, the guards were fine in this game, but it was all about Cat, Rudy, and Nas doing, and Jaden McDaniels doing what they needed to do. Uh, so that was all very impressive. The Wolves take on the Celtics tonight in Boston. Of course, the rematch from the game in uh, way back in early November, the overtime win the Wolves had over Boston when uh, it was a bit of an Anthony Edwards national attention coming out party for this season with their defense. Uh, Anton McDaniels, the defense on Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown down the stretch. Uh, we don't really have time to preview that matchup right now, um, but it's going to be tough. Second night of a back-to-back traveling all the way up from Orlando, a long flight. Uh, Boston sitting there waiting. Um, you know, guys at least played starters, but a little bit less in this one in Orlando. So we'll see. Hopefully the wolves can be competitive in this one. I think they will. I think it'll be a close game. Boston's really good. And it's going to be, I mean, they're the best team in the league all season. So, um, should be fun. We'll of course do the post game podcast that'll post Thursday, but before then, actually the next episode in your feed, and it may already be up depending on when you're listening to this, the Minnesota basketball party on Wednesday, myself, Jack Borman, the editor in chief at Kana Supis, uh, Reggie Wilson, the sports anchor at care 11 and also Ron Johnson, the Ron Johnson show plus Sam Ekstrom. We'll be talking all things wolves basketball. That's here. The audio is right here on lockdown wolves. If you're watching on YouTube, go over to the lockdown sports, Minnesota YouTube channel to watch that episode. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the Orlando game. We'll also talk about the week ahead, what to expect uh, for the wolves. And then the, the live postcast will also be after the game. That'll be Jack Borman from Kana Supis. We'll be joining uh, Luke Inman of lockdown, Minnesota, and that's live on YouTube on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota YouTube channel following Wolves Celtics here this evening. That's all we have for you today here on the show. A big thank you for watching. A big thank you for listening. And uh, a big thank you for making us your first listen every day. Of course, the show is free and available everywhere, including YouTube, as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. Wherever you like to listen to podcasts, you can find Lockdown Wolves. You can also watch on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And you can follow an X at Lockdown T Wolves and also at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C K E N. Of course, the Lockdown Wolves podcast is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your local experts on all the biggest stories. Once again, I'm Bed Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.